Welcome back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I am Mikali and starting us off on our second hour is our quote of the day. And we're getting our quote from Marcel Prost and it says, Let us be grateful to people who make us happy. They are the charming gardeners who make our souls blossom. So don't take advantage of all those people around you that you like to be with them, but you do not pay attention to them because they're the very people who actually make your soul blossom. So let's take time to say thank you to them and also try and be that person who makes someone else happy. So make someone else happy today because you are the gardener of their soul. Now that is our quote for today now moving into something totally different because we love you guys we do as switch tv and aladdin has noticed that we do so they've partnered with us to make sure that you actually get something very interesting they are offering a 90 percent discount when you shop off their clothing or groceries online now as our audience on switch tv they're giving an extra discount of 200 kenya shillings when you use the coupon code swh200 that is swh200 your goods will be delivered within 48 hours of request now let's get shopping with aladdin you know what to do with that money right now. Now, getting into this hour, I told you matters of the heart are going to transition on to the second hour because it is Relationship Tuesday. We're talking about strained relationship between adults and parents. So he's calling it the breakup with parents, which is very, very sad. It's one of those relationships that you really do not want to have a breakup with, but things happen. They are arguments, there are disagreements, things that you can never agree on. And you as a child decide, you know what? I'm done with this, I'm breaking up with you. Well, not quite in those words, but we're gonna be looking about that particular scenario and so much more. And our guest today is a relationship coach, Mary Gasharu Karibu Sana Kwenye Studio. Thank you. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for honoring us. And talking about this very, very sensitive um, issue, it has happened over and over. You, you meet people who lost contact with their parents a long time ago mm -hmm. because they did not agree. And it could be, uh, people my age, younger than me, and even adults, uh, you know, they're, they're over 50 years, but they have got no idea what is going on with your parents because they got to a point where we're done. We cannot agree on this and this and this and this and that. But it's not the way that things should be, and that mm. is what we are going to be talking about here. Yeah. Karibu sana. I don't know where you want to start with this, but is, is, it, is it common? Uh May I say it is common but may not be common okay. de depending on the age of the person in question, the child. All right. And uh, let me start by saying that uh, it is not very awkward eh, to have a conflict or to have a uh, relationship in, in per se with parents. Eh? Because what counts is how well are you able to resolve this yeah and again when it comes to relationship problems with parents it's not like these others that we have with colleagues and friendship out there mm -hmm. because when there is a difference between you and your parents there is some element of guilt that yes. tags along it's true yes it is easily said i'm done but at the back of your mind you're not done you're not done because parents form a significant other that you cannot ignore. I will collide, collide with you and I even delete your number from my phone. But even if I deleted my father's contact from my phone, deep down my heart, he remains my father. That's true. So what we are saying today is, it's not about the conflict. It's not about the disagreement. It's about your ability to resolve that particular yes. discrepancy. and because you are dealing with a parent yes. the ability to resolve with it eh? i mean to resolve it and uphold a lot of respect because of the person in question mm -hmm. parents yeah and uh, there are so many reasons that bring about these differences yeah eh? because i'd like to know what would mm. push me to that point mm. really mary yeah. what would push me to that point mm. where I do not want to see my parents again. I don't want to talk to, about them. Even mm. when I meet with my siblings, they know. Mm. We're not talking about dad and mom. 
because probably I'll walk out on them. Mm. What are some of those things yeah. that could have happened? Yeah, some of the very common causes of these uh, differences may arise from developmental changes and needs of both the parent and this adult uh, adult child. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as we grow up, eh, our needs change. Yes. And therefore, my parents may continue seeing the very child they mm. were seeing those days. Eh? Mm. And so I feel that they are encroaching into my freedom. Yeah? Or my parents feel I am not respecting them. So there is that element of failing to let go. Flexibility. Yeah? Yeah. Because as a parent, I am supposed to come to re the realization that now this is no longer a child. Eh? but an adult. As, a, as, an, as an adult child, I'm also supposed to realize that he's my parent or she is my parent. I need to walk along or to handle his demands with ease, yeah. much as sometimes may, they may be very unappealing. For instance, for adolescents, they are seeking autonomy. Mm -hmm. They are seeking identity. So when they see this mom or dad eh, who is just stuck there, I need this done. I don't want to see you with so-and-so. They wonder, what is it? I think they were also there. Why can't they let go? And in the process, they, they become defiant. They walk away. Young adults who have just finished school, they also need the freedom to go out there and explore on their own and also even start living on their own. Yeah. But here is a mother who feels, no, you are not of age. You cannot start living alone. <laughs> yes, times have changed. How do we trust that you can live on your own? And out there, they want to conform yes. with their age mates. Yeah, we forget it's also love, that they're coming from a place of love. Yes. yes. So when they hear a colleague has negotiated that and the parents have accepted that they move out, and here I am, my parents are still holding on to me. I say, is it do or die, living with my parents? Yeah. Let me walk out. Yes. And in the process, you have to hurt your parents. You may even hurt other siblings who feel no. You have gone overboard, you are supposed to have respected what mom and dad said. Yeah. Then we come to these older adults who are possibly over 30, over 40. They also need their space in that family where they were brought up. For instance, a, first old, a firstborn son may look at the dad or the mom and they realize that these people are growing older and older. Mm -hmm. They may feel that there is need for power shift a shift of power from dad and mom. Oh. Yes? Yeah. They may feel that we cannot trust these people anymore with decision making. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the process of trying to take over, possibly they may not take over the right way. Yeah. Because you're assuming, oh, they are old now. Give us space. Uh, particularly for men. The man and the man. Yeah. The father may feel, no, I'm being unseated. Somebody is taking up my seat without even informing me. Dethroning. Yes, I'm being <laughs> dethroned. Yeah. And I don't think there is anything wrong with dethroning, but I need to be prepared for that dethroning. Mm, mm. The mother at times may feel, oh, this man is old. I think what my firstborn son is doing is the right thing. Yes. So they start forming some alliances. And dad may say, you the wife, you and your son are planning to dethrone me without even informing me. So yeah. those developmental changes yeah. need to be handled with a lot of care, both on the part of parents and, and the both, children. Yeah. But you, you mentioned guilt and how it never leaves us, mm. right? Yeah. And we agree, as much as you might have cut contacts with your parents mm. uh, and probably your siblings or whatever, mm. the, the guilt never goes. But what of a situation where you're in a toxic space with your parents. Mm -hmm. You're not at peace. Mm -hmm. What happens then? Isn't it necessary to say that this breakup needs to happen? It needs to happen and it may not need to happen. Okay. Because we are saying here there is an element of genes. Yes? Yes. And we also need to develop better interpersonal skills. We also need to look at the cause of this that is telling me, no, I need my space, yeah? You have seen in our nation where we have come up with bu Building Bridges Initiative. Yes. I think this is something that was never brought in the limelight 
there before, but I need. I think it's th something that we need to initiate in our families because I don't see what is this that will make me my uh, and my dad or my mom uh, not have a, a common platform. And guilt tags along with me because let me ask you a question: yeah. Have okay. you ever seen a person who complains about this toxic? relationship mm -hmm. to the extent that if mom or dad dies they cannot attend their funerals i have heard but they are very rare very rare yeah very very uh, rare yeah very very rare and i wish you'd also take your time eh, to ask that person what they felt in fact they would even verbalize openly and tell you that they really looked for something to keep them busy on that day yeah what was making them look for something to engage until the day is done guilt so that guilt is inevitable because there is blood. And who could you place more important in your ranking of friendships eh? or uh, intimate relationships other than your mom, the person who brought you, the person who birthed you? Yeah. So there is that uh, element of the, the separatedness yes. cannot really be defined. I think it's divine. It is divine, for sure. It is, it is divine. It is divine. Yeah. But looking at parents who are sometimes not even ready to be parents, we cannot automatically say that uh, all parents are good parents. No. Just because you're a parent doesn't mean that you're a good person mm. and good to your children mm. as well. Mm. What happens in that situation where you've grown up mm -hmm. and you know very well that dad or mom is not good mm. for me mm. or to me because even the kind of advice you'll find that mm. we have cases of in-laws where mothers will tell their daughters you know this and this and this and this and that mm. and then the daughter will be like no 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 i cannot take this mm. negativity mm. anymore yeah. what would you advise in such a situation where mm. i really want to be there mm. for them but then mm. the vibes that i'm getting from my mom or mm. my dad mm is not healthy for me. Yeah. One, I think we need to develop le resilience. The ability to bounce back even when relationships are not working. Okay. Secondly, after we are now able to bounce back even when that talk is very toxic, eh, we need to put up or to build bridges. Or no, sorry, boundaries. Okay. Build a, bound a boundary, put up a boundary, erect a boundary between you and that other person. Yeah. But that boundary need, needs to be very porous. Very porous. <laughs> okay. So that at one time, yes. when things are not as bad, you are able to penetrate. So we are to, saying these breakups, might, it, they don't necessarily have to be breakups, but disagreements will definitely they're be They're just there. disagreements. Yes. They're just disagreements. Yeah. Otherwise, when a disagreement is too hot, eh, mm -hmm. I think the, the w you, w let us allow another third party into it. Yes. Sometimes we say it's matters of the family. We don't need to bring that other person in. Eh? Yeah. But when it has reached a point where you, you, the two of you cannot resolve it, I think it's important that we include another party. If, even if you feel that that, that, that other person might broadcast you, eh? mm. look for a professional like a counselor who will bring in their input without having to take it to the public domain. And that is one of the ways of bridging uh, the gap or mm. uh, making a porous uh, boundary, boundary where yes. you're able to go back and have this conversation. But what mm. if you are in a situation where mm -hmm. they're not willing to do that mm -hmm. and you really want to create this relationship or make it work? Mm. What are some of other ways for anyone who is in a toxic relationship or have broken up with their parents, mm -hmm. what are some of the ways that they can uh, remedy that situation? One, you can choose to first live alone, yes? And then I believe time tells so many things. Time, give yourself time. Try to look for things that will break the ice over time. Because when you realize that I'm too solid, I'm too hard to be approached, yeah. give me time, give me time. And then wait for that opportunity when you can approach me. But then if for sure, this person in a, is, an, is unapproachable, at times we say we can leave it, and particularly when you're dealing with adult children. Yeah. Parents should also realize that this is a different unit, a different entity. Yeah, so time tells it once again, I say.
So we just wait it out. You just wait it out, but uh -huh. you wait with a lot of respect. Wait from a distance. Yeah, keep your distance, <laughs> observe the respect, yeah. because this is your mother. No matter how hard that she is or he is, your, yes. your father, yeah. wait, keep a safe distance, respect. Another something that comes up to bring these uh, conflicts eh, is expectations. Yeah. The parent, for instance, may have raised up these children with a lot of financial problems. Mm. And so when along the way they are blessed with good jobs, she expects something back in return. It may not be verbalized, yes. but they are expecting. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes they put the bar too high. Yeah. Here is somebody who is just starting off their lives. And mom here expects a transformation in her life because she may be saying out there, I am the person who has made you get where you are. Mm -hmm. You have got your own needs. And therefore, you first take care of your own needs without looking after mom or dad. Uh, and they feel no. The element of they mean she or he is not reciprocating yeah. with the rate at which we expected. And therefore, they may get to a point that they say, hey, we cannot wait anymore. Probably she's the type who will never do it until they are reminded. And so they may be reminded in an approach that is not very pleasant because the mother or father still feels, I'm in charge, this is my child, yeah. I took them to school. Again, it becomes a problem. It is. On the part of the child, again, yeah. this adult child, eh, the expectation may be the other way around. During the previous developmental stages, eh, could be you are dealing with an alcoholic father. Mm -hmm. Along the way, because of age, eh, his drinking patterns have changed. He has become a better person. Yeah. And probably when you're in school, it's mom who was struggling to have you go through school. He's back. And his expectations are also there. Yes. And your ex expectations are also there. So when he expects or he asks for something from you, yes. deep within, you may be doing it with a lot of resentment. Or That's because true. you may not be able to, you don't have the audacity to say no, yeah. you keep off. Yeah. Again, conflict arises because they are wondering, after all this struggle, they cannot give back. You know, this is, um, it's a full circle. Mm. Well, this year is called full circle, but it, I feel like I have dwelled on the child. Mm. But what about the parent, you know? Mm -hmm. Do they also reach out? And what are some of the ways they can do to do that? Because this child might just go and go and go and go. Mm. But what about the parent? Do they give up and just let the child go? What can they do? Really, do parents give up? Okay. Really, do parents give up? Eh? Like our mothers are very fond of praying. And they are very fond of even telling others. A parent will even reach out to colleagues. Yeah. They will even find out from cousins and friends, eh? Who is a friend of who? Who ko Nairobi wako? Unasikia wanakuwa na nani? And they will try to get out and reach that other person who has been men mentioned in the friendship circles, eh? So so that they reach out to the child because just as the parent or as the child feels guilty that there is this bad blood so does the parent so does the parent yeah yeah because i said earlier there is the the element of genes you cannot separate them Absolutely. it's easily said than done i'm yeah. done with you it's but just, no. It, no it's not coming from the heart <laughs> it's true you're saying that at the heat of the moment Absolutely. so parents equally try their best to have the relationships ironed out. Mm. If you ask them, they would say that they would like a chrysalis relationship. It's true. But unfortunately, we are adults. We have got different tastes and preferences. And so conflict is at times inevitable. Absolutely. And mm. what I have to say about that, my take home is build that bridge. Yes. And it is very true mm -hmm. that we will fight. Yes. We will disagree. Mm -hmm. And I will feel like I am grown and my mom and dad, they do not know anything and I know it all. Yes. But time is a healer. Mm. So take time mm. and remember to build that bridge. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Okay. Mary, that's been very enlightening mm -hmm. and encouraging 
to any person out there mm. who is going through a breakup with their parents. So mm. go ahead and mend that bridge today because mm. it is important. We're taking a very short commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Full Circle with Joyce. I am Mikali.